It's now three years since 5G technology was launched in the UK, but many of us are still using older mobile phone handsets that aren't compatible. So in this video, I'm gonna try and explain what I can explain best, and that is about wireless networking. Specifically, in this video, we're talking about mobile networks, that of the likes of 3G, 4G, and most importantly, 5G. Recently, other creators on the platform have been chiming in on their thoughts of 5G. And if you've been keeping tabs of this, you'll know that the general overview is that it's not positive. People don't really like 5G, whether that's from a made up environmental standpoint or the fact that the service just isn't what they were expecting or that they were more importantly sold. And although 4G and 5G is different to Wi-Fi, a lot of the same principles and how these technologies work can overlap and do apply to both. So I do have a bit of understanding as to what's going on with these 5G networks. Really low latency, lots of devices connected, and above all, things like multi-gigabit speeds. Now, knowing what I know about how wireless communications worked, I could see right through this. However, to the general public, they have been told that they're gonna get multi-gigabit speeds to their device, so when they go and take out a 5G contract and see the 5G logo on their phone, they expect that and then are sorely disappointed when in some cases the 5G is worse than the 4G. So basically people are being people feel like they're being ripped off. I've been to the shop and I've picked up some SIM cards from EE, O2, Vodafone and 3 respectively. So we can test all of the carriers here, the main ones anyway, in the UK. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will understand why 5G can't do the things that two years ago they promised it will be able to do because physics is just physics. This is the Netgear M5. So basically what this has got inside of it is a really large battery and a slot for a SIM card. So what we can go ahead and do is put our SIM card in this. This will connect to either the 4G or the 5G networks and this works fine with sub 6 5G which we'll talk more about later. It also has a gigabit ethernet port on the bottom. It's plugged into this with an ethernet cable and then this into the bottom of my iPad. And now we have our 5G modem with our SIM card of choice giving reliable test results to our end client. This thing is gonna be the key to all of our testing today. So as you can see right here on the Netgear device with an EE SIM card installed, I'm picking up here what the Netgear router is calling 4G+. So I've got my iPad here and it's actually wirelessly connected to the 5 gigahertz wireless 6 network that this is giving off. We are pulling 200 meg on 4G. And if you're thinking, Alex, that speed is a bit mental for 4G, yeah, you're 100% right. It is. It's more like 5G speeds. What we just tested then was 4G plus on the EE's network. And now the reason why that was so good is because that 4G is working very closely in spectrum to that of where the new 5G stuff lives on our broad spectrum scale. Now, this is where it gets interesting because not all 5G is created equal. You've got low, mid, and high band. And for the focus of this video, we're gonna focus on the mid and high band. Mid is known as sub six between two and six gigahertz. And the high band is known as millimeter wave. And that's basically anything above six gigahertz. And the main thing is there is pros and cons to which frequency band you use, whether you use the sub six, which is mid band, or you use millimeter wave, which is a much higher band. They have pros and cons. And hopefully today we can demonstrate this. Inside of the Netgear modem, I've installed a three SIM card. The 4G on EE was faster than 3's 5G, even though I am literally right next to the tower. The only one improvement I am seeing is that the latency is slightly reduced from around five to 10 milliseconds. Now running another test here reveals that the results are even worse. 
Now I am now parked just round the corner from the 5G mast, still really, really close to it geographically, but there's a building between me and the mast. These results are just completely inconsistent. We were hovering around 30 meg then, and then it jumped up to about 100. And inconsistency when you're trying to do things online is the most frustrating thing. Okay, so I've driven to my local industrial estate, which does have more 5G from 3. And as you can see, we are getting now close to a gigabit, which is insane. And this video by any means is not to paint 5G in a bad light. If you can get the speeds like this, I mean, close to a gigabit over any wireless communication is nuts. And again, we've even got great ping times, but I think it's the inconsistency here that people are starting to get annoyed at. Why when I'm parked in one place next to this mast, is it close to a gigabit? And at the mast right next to it at the other end of town, it's not even half of this speed. Now I've driven about 350 yards away from where I just was and I was hoping to demonstrate some slower 5G. We have absolutely nothing at all. I've fallen back to 4G. So what does that mean? And more importantly, why does this 5G differ so significantly from case to case? Getting a gigabit one end of town and not even a tenth of that the other end of town. And the answer lies within what actually makes 5G better than 4G in the first place. Do you remember, as I explained earlier, the 4G we tested in the office was working at around 800 megahertz to two gigahertz. And I think this was around one gigahertz 4G. The Sub-6 5G that we were testing in the car would have been around 3.5 gigahertz. And here lies the problem. The higher the frequency, yes, the more data you can push. However, at a trade-off, the less objects you can penetrate. So in my opinion, 4G is here to stay and here to stay for some time because it strikes the perfect balance between both range and performance for these widespread, well, countrywide, basically, deployments. And if you ask the experts, they will just tell you, well, just be patient. And we are not waiting for a miracle here. That's the most important thing to understand. We're basically waiting for them to stick a 5G tower literally on every street corner. So, well, there's basically 5G coverage anywhere because that is the only way we will be able to do this. So if you wanted my advice as far as taking out a contract as we move into 2023, I would say stick with 4G, unless you spend a lot of time in main city centres and are going to be subject to a strong 5G signal all the time. You're either not going to be able to pick one up unless you're really close, or you will be able to pick one up and it won't be as you will have expected it to be. It's going to be slower and you may as well use 4G. So just wait it out for another year. But yeah, welcome to 2023. That's the state of 5G. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.